What up? It's your boy, Luke for Prez, back in the mix, yet again, with another video for you guys. As always, hope everyone is having a fantastic day out there. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of my favorite methods for selecting the best keywords possible for your Google Ads campaign. If you're new to the channel and you're a music producer that's interested in learning more about how to market your music and get those beat sales, consider hitting that like button and that subscribe button. You know, maybe the bell as well, if you feel like it. You don't have to, but you know, it'd be nice. Anyways, with that out of the way, I know at first it can be really overwhelming trying to figure out what keywords to target. I mean, there are a lot of words out there, right? It's like, how do you narrow it down to know exactly which ones are going to bring the right people to your website that are most likely to actually purchase your beats? But luckily, there are a few free and easy tools at your disposal that you can use to really hone in on the proper keywords. The first one is called Google Keyword Planner. I've covered this briefly in a previous video, but it's worth mentioning again because even though it's not my favorite technique to select keywords, it can definitely still be a good starting point. So in order to access that, you need to have a Google Ads account set up. This is the dashboard that you see here and you can find the Google Keyword Planner tool by clicking on the button at the top right that says Tools and Settings, and then going over to the Planning column, and then selecting Keyword Planner. It's gonna give you two options, discover new keywords or get search volume and forecasts. They kinda of do the same thing, but discover new keywords will give you a list of suggested keywords, and all you have to do is just type in an initial keyword to get that list. So that's what I'm going to go over. So here is where you can type in whatever initial keyword you wanna investigate. So the first step in really developing an effective keywords list is to conduct a self audit, if you will, to steal a phrase that I heard from Gary V and really come to terms with what kind of business you're trying to run. The first thing to do is to figure out what kind of beats are you actually trying to sell? You probably already know the answer to that question. Do you make trap beats? Do you make R&B beats? Do you make drill beats? Do you make old school boom bap beats? Or some combination of that? Or something totally different, right? Even if you do make multiple genres of music, which ones uh, are you best at? What are you trying to accomplish with this campaign? Have you gotten any sales before? If so, what kinds of beats are selling the best? These are all things to consider before diving in and creating a keywords list. You wanna start as broad as possible. So for me, when I initially set this up and I've been running Google ads for like damn near three years now, when I first started out, I started super broad and so this might be a good starting point for you. If you're anything like me, you know, you might want to try rap beats for sale and see what happens here, right? So you enter that and then you click get results. It's going to give you an average monthly search number. It's going to give you a level of competition, meaning how many other people are using it in their Google ads campaigns. So that's going to determine how much you're going to have to spend per click. This also gives you some additional information like ad impression share, top of page bid, which basically means what can you expect to pay in order to be at the top of page one for a given keyword. And so for Rap Beats for Sale, it's saying in the low range, you can expect to spend 90 cents to get that number one position for the phrase Rap Beats for Sale. And on the high end, you might have to spend as much as $1.77 uh, to get there. The placement of your ads are going to fluctuate depending on a number of factors like the amount of competition, the amount of search volume in a given day. And this is changing like from day to day, right? So that's why it can only kind of give you a, a rough range of what to expect. What I think is extremely useful about the keyword planner is that in addition to giving you the data for the keyword that you typed in, it's going to also generate related keywords that you can consider utilizing in your campaign if they make sense, right? So 
this is a great baseline that you can use if you're really having a hard time coming up with keywords. You can simply like click on the ones that apply to you, right? And then go ahead and copy those and then plug them into your campaign when you're ready to actually launch it. What I recommend is instead of just going down the list and just, you know, selecting all of them, try to find keywords that have high search volume and low competition. I've said this before and I'll say it again. That's the key. However, it's very difficult to find that ratio, right? Because most of the successful keywords are gonna have high competition because those are the ones that are working, right? So do your best, but if you have to select, you know, high competition ones, so be it. It's not the end of the world and you can still run a successful campaign that way. Now I'm going to move on to another technique for finding keywords in your niche. And I actually like this one better. I think it's a little bit more effective than the Google Keyword Planner, and that's utilizing google.com itself. So what I recommend doing is opening up a new window incognito, so it doesn't have your browser history, um, which can you know potentially like affect the uh, suggestions. And then you can do the same thing. You can start with like the most basic keyword possible, right? So like, let's say rap beats for sale. And then take a look at the suggested search terms that automatically populate underneath your query. These are the most searched keywords that are the closest in relation to the one that you typed in. So if you go down this list and you see certain keywords that fit your business model, this is a great way of knowing which keywords will probably be able to generate you a ton of clicks. And as you can see, like some of these are not present on that Google Keyword Planner list that we just looked at. So that's why it's important to kind of make sure that you're doing your due diligence and attacking this from multiple angles and using all of these tips that I'm going over in this video to come up with the most comprehensive list of keywords possible. You can spend a ton of time on the Google homepage just trying different combinations of stuff, right? So like I took away the for sale and just tried rap beats and then you get even more keyword options, right? You know, uh, buy trap beats. Let's try that one, right? Boom, buy trap beats online, buy trap beats, purchase trap beats, best place to buy trap beats. And these are search phrases that Google is indicating has high search volume because they're the suggestions that are coming up, right? So this is like a major cheat code that I don't think anybody really like realizes. And the cool thing is you can also do this on YouTube. If you're posting your beats to YouTube or you're posting any kind of content to YouTube, you can do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like trap beat, look at this, instrumental, free for profit, to, you know, these are all keywords that you could potentially target. So it works the same way because as I've said before, and as you probably already know, Google owns YouTube. So the whole thing kind of works very similarly, right? So you can do this with artists too, right? Like Travis Scott type beat, like what's good here? Hashtags, free download. You can go crazy here. You can, you, like I said, you can, spent a lot of time just uh, investigating just from the Google homepage. Now, moving on to the next technique that you can use to find keywords that match your beat business. Go ahead and actually hit enter on one of these, right? And now scroll down to the very bottom and that's gonna show you additional search queries that are related to the one you just entered and it might include different keywords than the ones that we just encountered on the Google homepage. So this is yet another way of gathering more data in terms of what people are searching for at a high rate. You'll notice that on the suggested search terms that we saw on the previous page and these suggestions here, that a lot of the keywords have several words in them, right? These signify what are called long tail keywords. A long tail keyword is basically just a keyword with like four or more words in it. Typically, the more words are in a keyword or key phrase, the more specific and targeted the traffic is, right? 
which is a great thing, right? You wanna get as specific as possible with the type of people that are coming to your website to try to find those buyers, right? But there is a trade-off with long tail keywords. The more specific and targeted the keyword, typically the less search volume there is for that specific keyword, which is why I suggest having both short tail and long tail keywords, including both in your Google ads campaign is a good idea for a couple reasons. First of all, it's gonna make sure that your budget is maxing out, right? Because if you just have super specific long tail keywords, you might not get enough traffic to actually spend your entire budget. So even though the quality of the traffic might be slightly less just because we're dealing with more general keywords with the short tails, it's good to include those just so you have additional traffic and some of that might be accurate to what you're selling. But even if it's not, you can use those short tail keywords to find even more keywords. And I'll show you exactly how to do that now. So here we are back in the Google Ads dashboard. Go ahead and click on the keywords tab and then click on search terms. So I just have like a random month pulled up here. The search terms tab shows you exactly what people are typing into Google that triggered your ad. You'll notice this is not the same as your actual keywords list, which you can find under the search keywords tab, right? These are the actual keywords that you've selected and entered uh, to be part of your Google ads campaign. But these are just the general search terms that people type in to actually end up on your website. This is another great source for finding specific keywords that you can target in your campaign going forward. If you have a broad match keyword like rap beats for sale, right? You can see what similar things people are actually typing in and how those keywords are actually performing. You can see how many impressions they're generating, how many clicks they're generating, how much it's cost you obviously, right? So you need to have a campaign actually up and running in order to take advantage of this particular method. But the whole thing is all about optimization as I've preached many times before, right? It's a process that's going to take consistent refinement over time. And this is a great way to both create negative keywords, which I've covered in previous videos, and identify potential new keywords that you can actually add to your campaign going forward. Another great free tool that you can use is called Google Trends. This shows you the popularity of keywords over time. So you can see if certain artists, or certain genres are starting to take off or starting to fall off, and you can make decisions on what keywords to target based on the data that you find here. So for example, let's try Rap Beats for Sale here, right? My favorite generic example keyword, if you haven't noticed. So this doesn't really give us like a whole lot of data because it might not be the most searched keyword ever, right? But a really useful piece of data that it does provide you with is where the most search traffic is coming from geographically within the United States. And if you've seen my previous videos on Google ads, you know that it's possible to up the bidding for particular keywords if the people are searching from particular geographic areas. So you can actually raise the bidding if somebody types in Rap Beats for Sale from New Jersey because maybe they're more inclined to buy from there, right? These are the regions with the most search volume for that particular term. I think this works better for actual artists, right? You can see like their popularity over time, right? So like, let's try Pop Smoke because that uh, his album just came out. RIP and you can see like over time, interestingly enough, like the popularity has declined. I would imagine that pretty soon we'll see a sharp spike in search volume for pop smoke because the album just came out. Unsurprisingly, like New York and New Jersey are the top ones for, you know, pop smoke search queries. But you know, type in a, a bunch of different artists, some up and coming ones that maybe, you know, you just got put onto that aren't really popping yet. And if you notice that over time, the trends are kind of going upward, you know, that might be a keyword that's worth targeting in your Google ads campaign or as a YouTube video, like if you're putting type beats on YouTube, right? So. 
This is just another tool that you can utilize and kind of cross reference with the previous techniques that I've mentioned to get the best results possible when collecting keywords for your campaign. So that is basically it. Those are my favorite methods for establishing an effective keywords list that you can implement on your Google ads. I hope this has been helpful. Once again, like and subscribe. You know what it is. I'm Luke for Prez. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.